I am more than delighted because of the of the works of the Lord, everything that he has continued to do for us and to even be here this very day. I owe God all the thanks, all the glory. He is mighty, he is wonderful, and surely there is none above him. There is none like him. All the works that is done, you know, uh, from from the last time we were together on Friday until this day, surely has been his hand. Uh, we continue learning about, uh, you know, we are, we are now at the place where you're learning about being an ambassador of Christ, right? That's what our topic is. Uh, we came down from learning about uh, discipleship. Uh, we learned about, you know, we touched a little bit on, on apostleship. And now we are learning about uh, ambassadorship, right? And and uh, just to give you a quick recap, an ambassador is someone who acts as a representative or promoter of a specified activity. That is the dictionary meaning that we have, right? And, and as we think today, as we sink in today on exactly what it means to be an ambassador for Christ, right? I'm going to remind you, our guiding word is from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. That is, that is the word that is guiding us as we learn about ambassadorship, being an ambassador for Christ, right? And that being said, uh, to, to quote it, it says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us we beg you on behalf of christ be reconciled sorry about that be reconciled to god right that is the that is, that is what is guiding us in trying to understand what exactly it means to be an ambassador for christ so we looked at a few things last time about being an ambassador for Christ. First of all, I would like to say that as an ambassador for Christ, you are not just a representative. You're not just representing the kingdom. You're not just representing Christ, but you are also there to influence the world with the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Right? You are there to influence the world with the culture of the kingdom of heaven. So your work is not just to represent. Your work also is to influence your, you know, your generation is to influence the world around you. Might be spiritual, might be physical, but you are there to influence the world around you with the kingdom, with the kingdom culture, with the culture of heaven. This is so important. This is so paramount because, you know, we, we are not just here to tell people that, that God is real. That is not the only thing we are doing as ambassadors of Christ. We are also here to show them that God is real. You're not just here to show, uh, to tell people that God is real. We are also here to show them that that, that is so important. And especially to us as young people. Because, you know, one thing that has been of emphasis as we are learning about discipleship is having a, having a Christian lifestyle. And this word has, has been so, has spoken so many times that some of us just take it for granted. But I, I would like to emphasize that being an ambassador, being an ambassador of Christ, you're not just a representative. You're not just there to stand on behalf of. You're also there, right, to speak to people. Let them understand where you are coming from. Let them understand who you are representing. But beyond that, beyond that, you are there to show them. You are there to show them the culture of the kingdom that you are representing. So pretty much being an ambassador of Christ is a show and tell. It's not just a tell, it's a show and tell. I'm not just telling you that I'm born again, but the actions in my life, the actions in my life, they, they speak for themselves that I am a born again Christian. Right? Confessing that you're a born again Christian. Now you, you go the extra mile of showing people your actions. You're, you're not faking it. You're not just faking it. 
I promise you, if you try to fake Christianity, we are going to catch up with you. The world is going to catch up with you. You cannot fake, you cannot fake Christianity. You are either born again or you are not. Because let me tell you, being a born again Christian, being renewed of Christ, you know, living a Christian lifestyle, it's not as easy as we may make it sound because now you have to offer yourself completely. You have to surrender to God's will. Being a born again Christian, you actually have to let go of who you have been before you met Jesus. You have to let go of the person you may be without Jesus. And you actually have to surrender to him. The way you move, the way you do your things, the way you speak, the way you conduct yourself. As an ambassador of Christ, people can tell that you are a representative of heaven. I, you know, I like to give a story about myself and I'm, I'm not even bragging or anything, but back, back, back in the year 2013, I had, I had walked away uh, from... Um, from 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 the from the word of God, I had started to live my world uh, precariously and not caring about what God thought about me, right? So what I'm saying is, I had taken a step back and and I was not mindful. I was not mindful of the kingdom of God. But there is something you have to realize that once the seed of Christ has been planted in you, once the culture, the culture of Christ has been planted in you. There is some things, even if you desire them, this is what I'm telling you, you cannot fake Christianity. You cannot fake the Christian lifestyle. You cannot. Because it's, it's, it's not just about how you, you speak. It's not just about how you, you, know, how you do stuff. It's, it's everything encompassed together. People can tell. Right? The culture, once the culture becomes ingrained in you, then people can tell. People can actually tell, right? I'm going to give you a, 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 an example. It might not be the best example, but I think it's going to deliver the point home, right? People can tell if, if you're actually, uh, uh, you know, if you're speaking uh, the Kiswahili language, right? People can tell if your Kiswahili is from, from the coast region or if it's from the mainland. Because you see, the people who are actually from the coast, Kiswahili is not just a language for them. The Swahili language is not just a language for them. But Swahili culture is their lifestyle. The way they speak. The way they move, right? And, and we say there is there's no rush Right? You know, these people are actually the definition of there's no rush. The, the, the way they conduct themselves, you can actually tell this person is actually speaking not just the Swahili, but he's actually a Swahili person. Right? This person is actually a Swahili person. Now, another example that I can give you, because, you know, being ambassador of Christ is about culture. If, if, if you're, a, if you're a, an, an African coming from Africa, born and raised in Africa, the, your culture is way much different from even the kids whom we, we bring up here in America, right? You, if, you, if you're raised in Africa and if you raise your kids here in America or in any other foreign country, your culture and their culture is very different. Right? It's very different. The way I speak to my parents, born and raised in Africa, is very different from how my, my cousins and my, and, and, and my nephews, they speak to their parents, born and raised in, in, in a foreign country like here in America. Their culture is different. Your culture, as someone who believes in Christ, the way you speak, the way you behave has got to be different. And, you know, it's not a matter of it must be. You know, the moment your heart becomes offered to Jesus, the moment your, your heart is offered to Jesus, I do not need you to tell me that there is something different with you. I don't need you to tell me that your culture is different. Listen, you have to, to, to recognize this. Sometimes... You go even to a, 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 a very new place, a new environment, 
You go to a new environment. But there is people you connect with at a different level. There is people you connect with and then after you have talked, after you've had a conversation, you're like, why are we connecting so much? And then you realize that this person, this person, there's something different. I'm able to understand him. I'm able to, 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 to like connect with him. And then you realize that this person is actually a born again. They did not have to tell you. But the way they behave, the way they conduct themselves, you can tell. You can tell. And, and I like saying this, that there is actually evidence in that person's life that they, that they are born again. Because you know, being an ambassador is you taking your culture you taking the culture of heaven out to the world. One thing you have to recognize about, uh, about the Christian religion, this is a missionary kind of a religion. We actually re uh, reach out to people, right? We reach out to people. And, and we are not just reaching out to people. We, you know, the, the book of 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, we, you know, we are making an appeal to them. And it's not us, but it is God who's making an appeal. He's, he's appealing to the world to get reconciled with him, right? We, we are begging people on behalf of Christ to be reconciled with God. And you're not just begging them through, through words. We're also begging them through our actions. Because if you're the kind of person who is speaking about Jesus... But you're being, you're getting drunk, right? You 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 engaging in all these funny behaviors. Then how are you going to preach to me to come to Jesus if you, if your actions do not reflect Jesus, right? You have to realize that more importantly, an ambassador of Christ, his first priority is to be the mouthpiece of Christ. To speak of the kingdom of heaven. To spread the culture of heaven. This is a person who is, who is discipled, right? This is a person who has been discipled by Christ himself. This is a person who has followed the steps of Christ. This is a person who has gotten to the point where they are saying, it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. The other thing that you have to recognize about being an ambassador. An ambassador helps arrange the business of the kingdom of God. Right? Practical matters of the kingdom. In the book of First Kings, chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 1 to 12, I'm not going to read all this. I'm not going to read it. Right? But an ambassador, you know, he's someone who's out there trying to organize how, how you know, how we can feed those people who are hungry. How we can actually build rehabilitation centers for those people who are influenced by drug addiction. How we can actually reach out, organizing missionary work, organizing how we can communicate to those people who are not yet saved. Those people who have not yet seen their path. Right? So the kings, they sent out ambassadors. And in the book of 1 Kings uh, 5 verse 1 to 12, uh, the king of Tyre, right? The king of Tyre sent an ambassador to King Solomon to organize about the building, the construction, right? The construction of, of, the, of the temple, right? So as an ambassador, I am out here not just bringing the influence of the kingdom of God, but also helping in the practical matters. You know, being an ambassador as a youth, you should participate, in the practical matters of the kingdom of God. What do I mean by practical matters? Take part in praise and worship in your church. Play the drum set. Play the keyboard. Learn how to do something for the kingdom of God. And even not just that. Help even in becoming a nasher in the kingdom of God. You are taking part. Right? Take part. These, these, these are things. They, they may not look so great. You're not the one who's constructing the temple, but you're the one who's organizing the temple. You're the one who's helping clean the temple. You're the one who's helping reach out, feeding the hungry. You have to realize the kingdom of God is out here for the people of God. 
No matter where they are, no matter who they are, they are the kingdom of God. I have come to realize it. You cannot, you cannot assume the world and then pretend to be a Christian. Because, <laughs> listen, you have to realize even the Bible itself says that we shall be known by our acts of love. That's how Christians are, you know, you are known by that. Right? The other thing about being an ambassador of Christ, you are actually a person who is helping solve disputes. A person who is helping solve disputes. So in the book of Judges, chapter 11, verse 12 to 28, right? We are seeing people being sent out, right? To help resolve disputes. To bring peace, to bring a connection between people. Now, the kind of dispute that you are actually bringing, we go back to the book of 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. We are here to help people get reconciled with God. We are here to show people the way that they can actually go back. As in the book of Hosea, where they can turn, turn from the world, turn from their sin, turn from every kind of, 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 of worldly, um, you know, seeking worldly pressures and turn and turn to the Lord. So as an ambassador of Christ, you are helping the people get reconciled to God. That is very, very important. That is very important. And then the other thing you have to realize, an ambassador is, is someone who is there to help edify others with the words. Right? Just going back to, we are known for our love. Right? In the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, your work as an ambassador is to actually help uplift others. Help uplift others. Not to tear down people. Not to tear down. You're not there to tear down people. You are there to build people. You are there to help others rise and not to bring them down. John chapter 13 verse 35. You are known for your love. For the love you have among us, your fellow brethren. John 13 35. I keep quoting that verse. <laughs> it was not coming to me, but I got it. Yeah, right? John, it's John 13, 35. It's, 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 it's the unity. It's the unity. As an ambassador, as an ambassador of Christ, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. So today I'm just, I'm just going to lay it down like that. I'm just going to lay it down like that. An ambassador of Christ, you pursue righteousness. You pursue faith, love, and peace. Right? And you're not just doing it by yourself. You're doing it among the people who call upon the name of the Lord. Because an ambassador is someone who is there to reconcile people to God. You are there to influence people with the culture of heaven. So even as you pursue God, you're not just doing it by yourself. You're organizing cashers so that people can actually meet up for prayer meetings. You are pursuing the righteousness of God. You are organizing Bible study so that people can actually come and learn about the word of God. That is an ambassador. It's about the culture. You're, you're trying to influence the world with the culture of heaven. So as you, as you pursue, as you are pursuing the righteousness of God, as you are pursuing your faith, as you are pursuing love and peace, you have other people with you pursuing God in the same manner. So it's not just about you. It has never been just about you. The moment you have decided, I am tired of just being a student in the kingdom of God. When you decide to become a disciple, it, it, it stops just being about you. And it starts being about the community of believers. It becomes about the community of believers. It becomes about the community of believers. And even as I speak this, I want you to understand something. Right? You are not here to obey the world. You are not here to humble before the world. You, you are humbling before Christ. Right? You, you are here to obey God first. You are here to hear the word of God first. You, you are pretty much here bound by the word of God. God is your first priority. 
The book of Acts chapter 9 verse 29. God is your first priority. He's your first priority. He will continue to be your first priority. You have to realize he's the only one who is going to help you overcome every challenge, overcome every battle. It is only by trusting in him. It is only by obeying in him do you become effective. You become effective as an ambassador. That's the only time you become effective as an ambassador of Christ. Listen, do not be afraid of the world. Do not be afraid of those people who can harm just your physical. Because we know better. We know better that we are engaged in a war that is not a physical war. We are engaged in a spiritual war. Right? That is uh, um, the book of uh, Ephesians. We are engaged in a spiritual war. Yes, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. I, I believe it's either 11, 12, around there, 10 to 13, um, Ephesians chapter 6, um, 10 to 13. Yes, I believe so. We are engaged in a spiritual war. We are not fighting a physical war. No, we are not here to grapple with the world. We are here. Our, our war is, is, is a greater war. It's spiritual. We are here to bring people back to God. It's, it's not their physical beings. It's their spiritual beings to come back to God. Their spiritual beings to come back to God. Right? And in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, that you should only be afraid of he who can kill the body and the soul together. Do not just be afraid of those people who can destroy the body. <laughs> Sometime back, someone was asking me, because I do post other preachings that I do on YouTube and someone was asking me why are you why are you yelling so much on YouTube about all these things that you believe in everyone has a right to believe in what they want and I and I am saying it's it's not about you have a right to believe in what you want right it is me representing the kingdom of God it is me standing for God it is me just establishing let it be known that Kevin belongs to Jesus there is actually evidence against me that I am a Christian born again there is evidence and I want it to make it known not just come and start playing around no 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 you're not going to play around with me let it be known to you even as you approach me, let it be known to you that this guy is actually a born again Christian. Now, the problem is some of us, we do not have any kind of evidence that we are born again Christians. Can someone approach you and tell that you are, you, you're not, you're not, you know, the words in Kiswahili, I'm to a kawaida. You're not just an ordinary person. Can someone approach you and actually say there's something different about you? Listen, you have to walk and talk and conduct yourself as someone who actually has met with Jesus. Let the world judge you. Let the world speak. Again. And listen, they spoke against Jesus. <laughs> they did not even stop there against speaking against him. They actually went ahead and persecuted him. So just, just be prepared for these things. Just be prepared for these things. As an ambassador of Christ, you are going to endure persecution. And it's okay. It is okay. Remember that the, 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 the price, the reward for your persecution is not in the hands of men. It is not in the hands of men. I want you to understand, we are going to go through some hard stuff. Some people are not even going to understand us. Some of our families will actually think we are crazy. Some of our families will actually think we are crazy. I will tell you someone very close to me. As I grew up, they used to call me, they used to tell me, you're behaving like a shuja. You, you're pretending like a shuja. And I'm like, listen, just because... I have chosen Jesus. It's okay. You're going to, as, as an ambassador of Christ. You expect the world to treat you like they treated Jesus. You expect it. And it's fine. Listen, it's okay. It's okay to go through that persecution as an ambassador of Christ. But do not stop. 
Do not stop representing. Do not stop bringing the culture of heaven down here on earth. Do not stop. Do not take a step back and think that it's going to be okay. No. It's, it's not going to be okay if you decide to, to hide. It's not going to be okay if you decide that you're not going to, to represent Jesus anymore. It is not okay if you decide that I am too afraid of what the world is going to say about me when I speak about Jesus. It is not okay. Listen. I am just here to encourage you. As an ambassador, you will go through persecution. And it is fine. It is fine. <laughs> when you go out to eat with your friends, listen, challenge them. Tell them, before I eat, I have to pray. Before I eat, I have to pray. I have to thank God because of this meal. Let them say what they will. And it's okay. It is fine. Let them persecute you. It is fine because let me tell you, the reward of your persecution does not lay in the hands of any man. There's no one who holds the reward to your persecution on this earth. No one. The most beautiful thing is, Lord, even if I get persecuted here on earth, you are telling me there is a reward for me in heaven. That is all that matters. Do you think an ambassador is paid by the country where he lives? No. He has to represent the country where he's from because the country where he's from is the country that is going to pay him. The country where he's from is the country that is going to honor him. That is, that is one thing that you have to understand. The world is not going to reward you. But where you are coming from, and we are coming from Jesus himself, we are coming from heaven itself. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, right? God had preordained you. God had preordained you. And this is why God is really against uh, abortion, because he has preordained. It's not by accident. It's not by accident that you are born, Right? And he knew you were going to go through this persecution. It is not by accident. So we come from him. He authorized for you to be born. He authorized for you to be here. And he is the only one who is going to reward you for all the persecution. For any kind of, of uh, people looking down on you. People discouraging you. Just hold steadfast. But more so. But more so, it's not just about you. It is not just about you. Jesus did not just leave heaven because he was happy just leaving heaven. Because he wanted to prove a point. No, 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 no. He came so that he could reconcile the world back to God. He came so that he could reconcile the world back to God. You are an ambassador of Christ so that you can help, so that you can help reconcile the world back to God. You are going through persecution so that you can help reconcile the world back to God. That is why we are here. The moment you, you, have, you have taken the step further. To be a disciple of Jesus. To be an apostle of Jesus. To be an ambassador of Jesus. It's no longer about you. Paul went through these things. Paul suffered through these things. Actually, if you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul is talking about all the things that he had to go through. All the pain he had to go through. All the sharpening he had to get through. For him, and, 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 and you know, this verse that we are quoting, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, is actually a conclusion. After Paul gave his story, after Paul explained his story, he concluded, he concluded, because of all these things, right? Even in verse 11, if you read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Knowing therefore the, the terror of the Lord, we persuaded men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on behalf that we may have somewhat answer them which glory in appearance, not in heart. 
For whatever we beside ourselves, it is to God. Everything we are doing, it's because of God. It's because of God. Right? It's because of Him. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. We are doing it because God has sent us. And not because of us, but because of those people. We are doing it for the people, of, for the children of God. And once again, I'm going to emphasize this. Every single human being on earth is a child of God. Whether you like it or not. Every single human being is a child of God. Whether you agree with it or not. No one was created. No one was born without the hand of God. No one woke up this morning without God waking them up. So every single person, whether it be the drunkard in the streets, whether it be the person who you feel an atheist, a Buddhist, a Muslim, right? Even our Shabab, I am telling you, it took the hand of God for them to wake up this morning. God is giving them a second chance. He's giving them a second chance so that these people can actually meet with you or another ambassador of God so that they can hear the word of God. So that their, their souls can be saved from eternal condemnation. So God is giving everybody a chance so that they can hear this word. So that they can know him. Because God is not pleased with the death of sinners. And now as I conclude, I challenge you. I challenge you. Right? This coming week, before we come back to the next Friday youth service, speak to one person about Jesus. Speak to one person about Jesus. Go out of your way. Speak to one person about Jesus. Go out of your way. Do not be afraid. Be a true ambassador. Be someone who is actually commissioned by Jesus. Speak to someone about Jesus. I, 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 you know, I, I, and I'm challenging you this week. Make it a purpose. Right? Even if it's your co-workers, let them know that you love Jesus. Let them know they can also be a part of the fellowship of people who are serving in the kingdom, of people who are delighting in the love of God. This week, I challenge you, just reach out to one person. Just reach out to one person. Let them know about Jesus. Let them know about Jesus. As, as I conclude, for you to be effective, right? You have to realize you must be capable to accomplish a, a, a purpose. And I believe each and every one of us is able to accomplish a purpose. What's the purpose this week? To just reach out to one person about Jesus. You must actually be in operation. Every one of us here, is actually in operation. We are disciples. We are people who are willing to sacrifice their Friday nights to listen to the word of God. So we are in operation. So we are we are already on the path to be effective this uh, to be effective disciples, effective apostles, effective ambassadors. You must be ready to produce a deep and a vivid impression. And I believe that we are all walking as disciples. Our lifestyle is reflective of our beliefs. We are producing every single day a vivid impression. People can see in us that we belong to Jesus. So even when it comes to talking to them about Jesus, it's going to be easy. And then number four and the last one, you must be prepared and available for service. You must be prepared and available to serve must be prepared and available. So just create that time to reach out to that one person. God has given you life. God gives you life every single day. Serve him this week by reaching out to one person. Serve God this week by reaching out to one person. Letting them know about Jesus. And if you speak to someone about Jesus this week. 
and they decide that I believe in Jesus. I believe in the word of God. You know, you just reach out to your pastor, reach out to your youth pastor, reach out. You can reach out to brother George. You can reach out to our mom, right? We have the WhatsApp group. Just reach out. Let them know I have one person who, am, who has accepted Jesus. Now let, let us disciple this person. Let us disciple this person. Tell them to even listen to Ezra Radio. Right? Make sure that they are now starting to get fed. Right? So reach out to one person this week. And I've given you the first step after you reach out to them. The first step that you're going to take is to ensure this person is able to get fed the word of God. So go ahead. Surrender to God's will. Study God's word. Step up your prayer life. Seek ways where you can help others and share your story of faith. I'm going to repeat that. Go ahead. Surrender to God's will. Study God's word. Step up your prayer life. Seek ways to help others and share your story of faith. Lord Jesus, 